الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد The question is asking here Is it permissible for him to sell counterfeit goods Things which are fake um, Irrespective of whether the consumer knows it is fake or not Is it permissible Now the ulama have said That it is not permissible for a person to be treacherous in his nature This does not befit the believer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran Inna Allah la yahdi al-kaidun khairin the people who are treacherous, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not make their way successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give them guidance. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man ghashana falaysa minna. Those people who are treacherous and cheat us and cheat one another, they are not from us. And the ulama have described this as being a major sin. In actual fact, it is from the way of the munafiqoon is that they used to lie and be treacherous. <coughs> the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if he speaks, he lies. One of the traits of the munafiq is that he constantly is lying. And you can see, you know, this treacherous nature uh, in the way that he speaks and the way that he conducts himself. Therefore, the ulama have said it is not permissible for a Muslim to be treacherous. In actual fact, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in his book has given it as a description to the believers that they are truthful and that they are sincere. With this now, the ulama from a fiqhi now perspective have said that anyone's hard work and intellect, Muslim or non-Muslim, that must be preserved. And these are known from the maqasid of the sharia and the objectives of the sharia. There are a few exceptions, but we're not, such as a harbi, etc. But we're not in that situation right now. We are now living amongst non-Muslims and Muslims uh, with fairness and justice and we've got laws and we've got covenants with one another and treaties so it becomes in an arena in, in an environment where we have to be truthful to one another so if you've got a muslim who's worked hard to create something or a non-muslim to work and worked hard to create something you are not allowed to go against that and think oh these are kuffar anyway or something like that that is not permissible Hence, from the maqasid of the sharia, it has come from the objectives of the sharia. What is the purpose of the sharia? One of the purposes of the sharia, it has come to protect human intellect and wealth and honor. These things cannot be breached. And like we have said, if a person was to do this, then this would be considered as a major sin with the ulama. Therefore, selling fake items um, is going against more than one thing when it comes to trade between Muslims and non-Muslims alike. You are selling something which is not factual. You are making it out as if, you know, this thing is real, but it's not real. Or it could be that you are saying to the person, no, look, it's a rip-off, it's a fake, it's not real. But then still you are going against the intellectual copyrights which exist, the inventory copyrights and the patents that exist. You're not allowed to go against those. With this now, the ulama in the books of fiqh have also highlighted something which is very important that we need to understand because every single one of us trade that they have said that there is something which is known as khiyar al-ib khiyar al-ib say you go to buy something, a car, a t-shirt, anything any kind of electrical item you want to go buy something and the vendor, the person who's selling you the item is either aware or not aware of a fault in the item. You as the consumer have something which is known as khiyar al-ib. Khiyar al-ib is you've bought something and it is faulty. It is not as if, you know, what you thought it was when you were buying it. With this, the ulama have said, if you have bought something and it works out or it transpires that this thing is not the thing that you actually wanted and you have been sold something which is not correct, this is known as khiyar al-ib. So now applying that to the world that we live in today where people are selling counterfeit items, this is something which is known in the classical books of fiqh, that if you have bought something, the sharia preserves your consumer rights. And it says, listen, if you have bought something and you are not happy with the item, especially if you've been duped, you have every single right to activate the clause of khiyar al-ib. Now when it comes to khiyar al-ib, you've got one of four options. Either you keep the item, you can sell it, to the, to the vendor, you can say to the seller, listen, I've bought this item, I'm not happy with it. You sold me something, but you know what? Forget it, I'll just keep it. That's one option. Second option, you ask for a full refund because you have been sold something which is not correct, it's not factual, it's not correct, it's not authentic. 
The third option, you can ask for something which is known as Al-Arsh. Before we talk about Arsh, you can ask for a replacement. These three, I think we live in the world that we live in today. Even when you go to you know supermarkets and department stores, you have these three options, really. I mean, this is something that we live with. Either you keep the item or you ask for a full refund or you ask for a replacement. I'm not happy with this particular item. There are deficiencies in it. I want to swap it. They will quite happily swap it for you. The fourth one, though, which is known as Al-Arsh. Arsh with the Alif, not Ain. Al-Arsh with the Ain is the Arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Arsh with the Hamza is known as um, compensation. Now, the ulama have differed as to how to work out that compensation. But to keep it simple, okay, one of those ways is where you look at the fraction. So if you paid for something and then you work out how much his actual value is and then the fractions between how much you paid and how much it is actually worth, that's what you deduct and that's the compensation. Others have said, look, if you've paid 100 for a T-shirt, it's a designer T-shirt, for example, you paid £100 for it. Works out to be fake. But the actual T-shirt itself, without that name, is probably worth £10, £20. What's the arsh? There's an £80 difference. So you can say to this person, listen, I want my £80 back. That's how much you owe me, because this T-shirt is only worth 20 See, this is known as khiyar ape. And this is, I mean, why would that be there in our sharia? Why would that be something that the fuqaha have discussed Unless if your consumer rights are preserved and people should not be selling things which are counterfeit and fake. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives us the best of understanding of his religion and that he places barakah in everything that he gives us and grants us. Allahu alam wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.